because 1997, Mike and Big Shot have something in common. Something quite peculiar. Commercials that aired in 1997 for Big Shot Soda. You need a big shot? I got your big shot right here. Yeah, I don't think that's it. All right, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to do is clear my own understanding of things. Spamton appears in two different routes of Deltarune Chapter 2 in three different forms in five locations. In a normal playthrough, Spamton appears as a mini-boss in a dumpster in the trash zone of Cyber City. You later encounter him as a shop owner in a different section of the trash zone. And finally, he appears in the mansion basement as a secret boss if you do his quest, this time appearing as Spamton Neo. In the weird route, Spamton again is seen living in a dumpster. The dumpster that you can encounter Toby Fox in. Here, he sells you a thorn ring, which costs 1997 Cromer. You can then encounter him in the mansion basement, changing into his final form. Later, when Chris goes to seal the fountain, Spamton appears as the new final boss of the route. Again, Spamton Neo. That concludes the amount of appearances made by Spamton in Deltarune that are known about at this time. Spamton is a complicated figure to describe. On the surface level, he seemingly is the embodiment of early internet spam, but most importantly for this analysis, he also acts like a William Loman type figure in his own narrative. He's constantly talking about making deals in his favorite year of 1997, reminiscing about the past. However, I want to talk about Willie Loman for a second. I read about it on Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. William, Willie Loman, is a fictional character and the protagonist of Arthur Miller's classic play, Death of a Salesman, which debuted on Broadway with Lee J. Cobb playing Loman at the Morosco Theater on February 10, 1949. Loman is a 63-year-old traveling salesman from Brooklyn with 34 years of experience with the same company who endures a pay cut and a firing during the play. He has difficulty dealing with his current state and has created a fantasy world to cope with this situation. Okay, back to video games. That's right! Now's your chance to be a big shot! Spamton as a character frequently references becoming a big shot in almost a religious manner. He only likes three things. Deals, sales, and 1997. That's at least according to his dialogue. At the end of the day, Spamton is actually a puppet meant for our entertainment. It's a role he has both embraced and sought freedom against. Why is my body doing this thing? I'm like a puppet on a string! <laughs> Much like Willie Loman, Spamton is completely enamored with the idea of being rich and well-liked. It's the only place he thinks he can find true happiness. The artistry of sales is where he thinks he can find this success and therefore is self-content. Except, this rule meant that Spamton G. Spamton will never be a free agent. He becomes a servant of the customer and has to bend to their wishes. On the other hand, is the corporation that basically owns him. In Death of a Salesman, we never get to learn what product Willie Loman actually sells. Regardless of what it is, it will always be something owned by someone else. And then we have Mike. At the top of the video, I responded to a prevailing theory. The way it goes is that the Mike, which we see Spamson constantly refer to, is actually Michael Iron Mike Dicka. The full video is linked below, which I encourage you to watch for better context. I don't really agree with this theory. For starters, the Big Shot commercials are just something Mike Dick uh, wasn't particularly well known for. He was a football coach first and foremost. And other than that, secondly, the theory doesn't really explain lines when Spamton says, Are you getting all this, Mike? I'm finally, I'm finally going to be a Big Shot. If that was Mike Dick, uh, why would he be talking to Mike there? It just doesn't add up. Assuming Mike is someone from TV, which honestly is not a given, my bet is that Mike was a game show host. That's because you could see in this line, 
So why are you stealing the fountain? To blank me over right at the good part? What are you, a game show host? That's a pretty specific comparison to make if you ask me. If you think Mike was a real person, then I guess Michael Aspel, who was hosting Flamingo Fortune in 1997, would be your favorite candidate. I personally don't buy that Mike was a real person all too much, but, you know, I want to throw throw Michael Aspel out there as an alternative. Now, assuming my comparison to Death of a Salesman holds true, my actual guess for who Mike would be would be some sort of Charlie-like character for um for Spamton. Personally, I think the truth lies somewhere close to there. At various moments in the weird route, final uh, fight, the narrative text makes several references to an audience and a stage. Spamton turns to the audience and laughs. The stage lights are shattered. Spamton begs the audience. Spamton prays to the audience. There is no audience. Spamton begs the audience to stop taking the furniture out of his room. If Spamton was actually a reference to the stage play, this would fit a lot more with that theme and characterization. Either way, that's where I have to end it. I wanted to make this video in 24 hours as part of a personal challenge, and I'm kind of running out of time here. Thank you so much for watching. Please click like and subscribe for whatever, and yeah, bye.